Here I want to look at a special class of numbers known as multinomial coefficients, prove something about them, and then also show that they can be used to prove Fermat's little theorem. So famously, Fermat's little theorem has a lot of different proofs, and this is one that's actually a little bit new to me, and it makes use of these nice multinomial coefficients, so I thought I'd make a video about it. Okay, so let's see how these things are defined. So for n, k1, k2, up to km, which are non-negative integers, satisfying the rule that the sum of all of the k's is equal to n, we define the multinomial coefficient n, choose k1, k2, k3, all the way up to km, as n factorial over k1 factorial times k2 factorial all the way up to km factorial. So this can be seen as like an obvious generalization of binomial coefficients. So in fact, the binomial coefficient n choose k is the multinomial coefficient with two entries down here, k and n minus k. Because clearly, k plus n minus k is equal to n, so it satisfies this rule. And then if you just write out the definition for a binomial coefficient and compare it with what you get from this, that's pretty easy to see. Okay, so this proposition that we'll prove ties them even close, closer with binomial coefficients, and that is with the expansion of a power of a polynomial. So in fact, we'll prove that x1 plus x2 plus all the way up to xm to the n power is going to be the sum over all m tuples of these k's that sum to n. So we're setting this up over here of the multinomial coefficient n choose k1 up to km of x1 to the k1, x2 to the k2, all the way up to xm to the km. Okay, so let's get into this proof. And so we're going to do this proof by induction, but we will not worry about the base case because the base case is just the binomial theorem. The base case is maybe obviously taken or maybe not obviously taken, but can be taken as the m equals two case. You could also more trivially take it as the m equals one case, but that's not super interesting. So anyway, you can take it as the m equals two case, which like I said, is just binomial ic expansion, which we'll just take to be a fact already or be a proven result already. Okay, so that means we need to start with an induction hypothesis. And while setting up our base case, we see that m was equal to two. That means we're inducting on the length of this sum right here. So let's suppose that this holds for some arbitrary m. So in other words, we have x1 plus all the way up to xm to the n is equal to this sum over k1 plus up to km equals n of this thing up here. So our multinomial coefficient and then x1 to the k1 all the way up to xm to the km. And then that is for sum m bigger than or equal to 2. Okay, and then from there we want to consider the next case. So here the next case will be having an additional term in this sum. So let's do that. So now we consider, like I said, the next case, that'll be x1 plus x2 plus all the way up to xm plus xm plus 1. Okay, nice. And then this is going to be, let's say, to the nth power. Okay, now we're going to cleverly group these. So we're going to think about everything between x1 and xm minus 1 as being like elements on their own or pieces of this sum on their own. But then we'll think about this xm plus xm plus 1 as something being grouped together. So the way that we do that, we can see that we have exactly m terms in this sum. It's just these last two terms are grouped together. Okay, well now we can apply the induction hypothesis. So that allows us to write this as the sum, these k1s up to km's that equal to n, 
And then our multinomial coefficient, n choose k1 up to km of x1 to the k1 all the way up to this last term, which is xm plus xm plus 1 to the km. Okay, nice. So again, that's just applying our induction hypothesis to this partitioning of our, let's see, m plus 1 term sum. Okay, but now we can apply the base case right here. In other words, we can apply the binomial theorem right here. Let's see what that's going to allow us to do. That's going to allow us to write this as the sum as k1 plus up to km equals n. A bunch of this stuff stays the same. So we have our multinomial coefficient, n choose k1 up to km. And then we've got x1 to the k1. That ends at xm minus 1 to the km minus 1. So now we can apply the binomial theorem and we'll have the sum as j goes from 0 to km of km choose j and then xm to the j and then xm plus 1 to the km minus j. Okay, nice. Okay, so let's maybe bring that up to the top and we'll finish this proof. So this is where we ended on the last board. I've moved my sum to the left, but that's the only change that I've made. Now I want to take this inner sum and re-index it a little bit. It's not exactly a re-indexing, it's just a re-envisioning. Instead of adding up from j equals 0 to km, what I want to do is add over all pairs km prime and km plus 1 that sum to km. Now this generally will not work, but the only reason it works here is because all appearances of j come with an appearance of km minus j, and when you sum those together you get km. So here you've got an appearance of j and an appearance of km minus j. So that means we can switch these out with km prime and then km plus 1. And then the same thing is happening here, but it's just hidden in the re-envisioning of the binomial coefficient as a multinomial coefficient. So that allows us to write this as km prime km plus 1. Okay, nice. Now that we've done that, I want to take this product of two multinomial coefficients and see if there's an obvious simplification. So that first one is n factorial over k factorial, k1 factorial, all the way up to km factorial. So that's this one. I had a little error there, but I fixed it. And then the second one is km factorial over km prime factorial times km plus 1 factorial. But notice that the km factorial cancels in the numerator and the denominator. And then we're left with n factorial over k1 factorial up to km minus 1 factorial. And then this new thing, km prime factorial and then km plus 1 factorial. But looking at that, along with these two sums, which are written in terms of things that sum up to a certain value, we see that we can smash these two sums together into a bunch of stuff that adds up to n, m plus 1 terms that add up to m. And that's because we've got an appearance of km here and an appearance of km here. Okay, so let's do that. So this is going to be now the sum, k1 plus up to km prime. That could be kind of switched out arbitrarily now back to km, but I'll leave it as km prime just to remember where we got it. And then plus km plus 1 equals n. And then we have our multinomial coefficient, n, choose k1 up to km prime and then km plus 1. And then finally, this monomial, which is x1 to the k1, all the way up to xm to the km prime, and then xm plus 1 to the km plus 1. But that's exactly where we needed to end to finish this proof.
Okay, so let's clean this up, look, look at a quick corollary, and then we'll use this to prove Fermat's little theorem. So here's a quick corollary, and that says that all of these multinomial coefficients are whole numbers. So I've written it as natural numbers here. So this is super obvious by this expansion, because if you expand this polynomial out, well, all of the coefficients will be natural numbers just by the way that the expansion is happening. But if you look over here at the definition of these multinomial coefficients, it's not super clear that they're natural numbers. But via investigating them this way, it is clear. So I think that's pretty nice. So if they're natural numbers, we can talk about them as being multiples of a certain prime or multiples of another number or being divisible by something. That's exactly how we'll use this result in order to prove from little theorem. Okay, so let's get to that. So as promised, now we're going to prove from little theorem using these multinomial coefficients. Let's recall the statement. It says for all prime numbers p and integers a, we have a to the p is congruent to a mod p. And here we'll only look at the case when a is bigger than zero. The case when a is equal to zero is pretty obvious because zero to the p will be equal to zero. And the case when a is less than zero can follow from this case where a is greater than zero quite easy. I'll let you guys think about those details. Okay, so let's get to it. We'll start with this left-hand side. So we've got a to the p, and then we'll write it as follows. This will be one plus one plus all the way up to one to the p. And how many appearances of one do we have? Well, you guessed it, we have a total appearances of one because one plus one plus one, a times will give us a. So this is an equality. We haven't even reduced with congruences yet. Okay, so now let's apply this multinomial theorem that we had on the last board. That allows us to write this as the sum over all k1 plus up to ka, that equal p, of the multinomial coefficient p choose k1 up to ka, and then kind of trivially, 1 to the k1, 1 to the k2, so on and so forth, but those are all equal to 1. And now I'm going to pull a bunch of things out of this sum, and that is any time one of these ki's is equal to p and thus the rest are equal to zero. So I'll pull all of those out and keep them by themselves. So that'll give us something that looks like this. p choose p comma zero up to zero. So there, that would be like k1 is equal to p. And then the next one would be p choose 0, p 0, all the way up 0. So that would be k2 equals p. And then that ends at p choose 0, 0, p. So that would be like ka equals p. And then what do we have after that? And so after that, we'll have plus the sum over k1 plus up to ka equals p, where all of these ki's are bigger than or equal to 1 of this same thing. So we have p choose k1 up to ka. But now let's investigate each of these. So each of these has the following form. We have p factorial in the numerator, and then in the denominator we have k1 factorial up to ka factorial. But then since each of these ki's is bigger than or equal to 1, we know that that comes hand in hand with each of these ki's being strictly less than p. So let's write that. We have 1 is less than or equal to ki, which is strictly less than p. But if it's less than p, that means that the whole denominator has no multiples of p. And that's because p is a prime number, so you can't ever multiply things that are smaller than it together to get a multiple of p. Okay, but then if the denominator does not have a multiple of p, but the numerator does have a multiple of p, which it clearly does because we have p factorial, that means this entire thing right here is a multiple of p. But if that entire thing is a multiple of p, then it's congruent to 0 mod p. So this is congruent to 0 mod p, this thing that's in the green box. 
So if that's congruent to zero mod P, if we reduce this mod P, all we have left over are all of these things. But let's look at each of these. Each of these is exactly equal to P factorial over P factorial times a bunch of zero factorials. And zero factorials are taken to be one. So we've got P factorial over P factorial, which is clearly one. So we have a bunch of copies of one to add up. How many copies of one? Well, exactly A copies of one. One for each of the spots that we take to be P here. So we've got one plus one plus one A times, which leaves us with A. And this is all working mod P because we had to work mod P to get rid of that green box over here. But then looking here, the extreme left hand and right hand side of the congruence, we see that we've gotten the proof of our result. And that's a good place to stop.